What's going on guys? How are you doing? Hope you're doing well out there. Hope you're doing well. So I'm going to do something today that a lot of people have been requesting that I do. And I didn't know how I felt about this uh, when I started this channel back up. So many people have come back to this channel, this new channel, and said, hey dude, you have to retell the old stories. And for a while, I went back and forth. I said, oh, I don't know. It just feels like that's getting like cheap views and stuff like that. Gotta watch your language that first minute here on YouTube. Stuff like that. And I just didn't know how I really felt about it, right? But then I thought about it some more. I said, these are my stories. I can tell them. Of course I can, right? And uh, today, today guys, we're gonna do the I had to kick a trainee off a truck story for you. Yeah, we're gonna redo it. It's been years, uh, time has passed, so I may forget some details of the story. I may leave some stuff out. I may add in some details that people were confused about when I did the first video, uh, because what I never expected was for that video to get millions of views uh, from people that weren't truckers. So I decided to bring it back uh, and start doing some of these old stories because uh, you know, in the face of uh, rebuilding uh, this channel from what we used to have uh, we've got quite a challenge in front of us but when I'm faced with these challenges guys I just like to remember what old Jack Burton does when the earthquakes and the poison arrows fall from the sky and the pillars of heaven shake yeah Jack Burton just looks that big old storm square in the eye and says give me your best shot pal I can take it. I did write that down, see it was off to the side here, so hopefully I didn't make that too obvious. I'm not going to memorize my damn lines. So anyways, uh, I had to kick a trainee off my truck. What a story it was, apparently a legendary story. So let's get into it because uh, I got stuff to do tonight, so uh, let's talk about it. So years ago, I, it's been a while now, five years ago, six years ago. I was a trainer for an over-the-road trucking company, for you, those of you that don't know exactly what that means. Somebody moves into your truck with you for weeks at a time uh, while you teach them to be truck drivers. Yeah, fun, right? Fun times. Uh, sort of a barrier to entry for trucking because a lot of people don't want to get into over-the-road trucking because they're like, I got to go live with some guy in his truck that I've never met before. Hopefully he's a cool guy. Hopefully we get along. You know what? I just don't want to screw with it. Keeps a lot of people out of the industry, surprisingly. Uh, used to be that way. Now you can get the CDL, go straight into local work all good but uh used to be you had to you know a lot of times guys would have to spend time out here on the road uh with trainers learning to be a truck driver and uh that's what i did for a little while for a little while i had this uh really cool uh trainee his name was linwood he was my first trainee um really nice guy eager to learn um intelligent listen to what i had to tell him and uh within three weeks he was off my truck and out in his own and i was so excited because i'm like man this training stuff's easy. These guys get on here, they're ready to learn trucking. Hell yeah. So shortly after dropping off the first trainee, Linwood, the safety department calls me. They said, hey, you're still in the terminal, right? I said, yep, I'm still here. They said, okay, when are you heading out? I said, tomorrow morning, I'm heading out. They said, perfect, because we've got a guy here for you. We've got a trainee and uh, we need you to take him out with you. Take about two, three weeks, he'll be out in his own truck and you'll have trained yet another guy. And I'm like, hell yeah, I can't wait. So we did the normal thing where they give me the uh, trainee's phone number. They said, go ahead and give him a call. Uh, let him know where you're at and you guys can work out the details from there, right? So I'm at the terminal, all excited. Hell yeah, get a new trainee, can't wait to do this. Can't wait to do this. And uh, I was doing laundry. I was doing laundry, right? And I called the guy and uh, he answers the phone and I said, uh, hey man, I said, I'm in the terminal, uh, the truck's here. Uh, if you wanted to head up tonight, uh, we're heading out three o'clock in the morning. So if you wanted to head up here tonight, uh, get everything situated in the truck you need to do. Um, and then we'll be ready to roll out in the morning. So this dude out of nowhere during this call just starts cussing, cussing me out, right? He's uh, saying weird shit like, why the fuck would I come up there and stay in the night Stay the night with the truck with a guy I don't even know when that truck isn't even leaving until morning time, right? I said, well, don't you need a place to sleep? And this was one of the points in that uh, first video that a lot of people that weren't truckers uh, weren't very clear on. I said, don't you want a like, place to sleep or, or do you, I mean, did they get, have a motel room for you the night? Do you have a ride here in the morning? All the logistics of making sure he gets to my truck, right? And he goes, the fuck you mean? I'll sleep in my own goddamn bed at home. That's what I'll do. 
I didn't know. I didn't know that he lived in the city where the trucking company was at because for an over the road truck driver, I have had a lot of trucking jobs and only one of them has been in the city that I lived in. So um, a lot of them are across the country in different places. So I had no idea that he lived there in that city. Uh, no one told me about it. I thought it was crazy that he was acting crazy, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe, you know, with him being new to trucking, uh, it's just a, it's just a misunderstanding. It's no big deal. So I said, all right, man, will you do what you need to do? I said, uh, truck's leaving at three o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, so, hey, I'll see you in the morning. You have a good night. And I got off the phone. So I'm thinking more about it um, while I'm, uh, you know, getting my laundry done and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, I just got cussed out by this guy just for trying to make sure he had a place to sleep and making sure he was going to be ready to go in the morning. And that seems a little uncall uncalled for, misunderstanding or not. Now, keep in mind, back then, I was a much younger guy and I was uh, much more timid than I am now. Um, so I was like, uh, I kind of just hope he doesn't show up. Then I'm, you know what, he's not here at three in the morning. I'm just going to roll out and uh, I'll get a hold of the safety department later in the day and say, hey, the guy just didn't show up. That's all there is to it. He didn't show up. Oh, well, too bad. And that was my plan. Because I'm like, I don't want to bring this guy. I don't know why he was talking to me the way he was. And I don't want to bring him. So I set myself an alarm for 2.30 that next morning, right? I had plenty of time on this load. I was ahead on it. And I'm like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to pre-trip this truck. And we're rolling out this yard at 3 a.m. without this guy. Because I don't want to deal with him. Well, I screwed up. And I slept in a little bit. And uh, I'm up around at like 3.30, you know, getting the curtains open, you know, getting ready to get the truck going. And, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I still miss the guy, right? And I'm getting everything ready. I'm pre-tripping the truck. And uh, then my phone rings. And he's like, hey, man, I'm in the fucking yard. Where are you? And I'm like, oh, shit, this guy's still a very happy person, as I can, you know, tell from his, his tone. And I said, yeah, my truck's parked by all the other trucks. Flashers are on. Um, only one with flashers on, you'll be able to see me. And uh, cool, sounds good. Uh, I see a car pull up in front of my truck and I go out to like greet the guy, right? Like I get out of my driver door, I go down there and I'm getting ready to like say hello to him. And I realize like there's no one there. There's a lady driving the car. That's clearly not my trainee. There's no one there. Well, he's already in the passenger uh, side door of the truck um, inside the truck at, at that point, And he's putting his bags on my bed, the bottom bunk. Uh, I think, I don't think it's a rule, but it's just tradition. The bottom bunk, if you're ever in a trainer's truck is the trainer's bed. That's mine, right? So I get in the truck and, uh, I notice he's throwing all his stuff on my bed. Side note. This was a lot of confusion in the first video, the big video, right? Was people said, dude, what are you telling him he can't have your bed for? Nobody's allowed to be riding, uh, sleeping in the top bunk while the truck's moving. If uh, you were a person that got trained by a company that treated training the same as team driving, meaning somebody was sleeping while somebody was driving, I've got bad news for you. You weren't trained very well. As a matter of fact, you were taken advantage of by a company that was treating your tr you and your trainer as team drivers uh, to maximize the miles in that truck. Um, and you, you got taken advantage of because that's not how training works. Training, how I did it, was I was always up and in that passenger seat the entire time my trainee was working. I was outside with him while he was uh, doing pre-trips. I was outside behind the trailer while he was backing into spots. That's how I train, that's training. Training is not team driving. So there was never a situation where he was uh, having to sleep on the top bunk while the truck was rolling because we shut the truck down at the end of the night and we called it a night and that's that. So I told him, I got back in the truck and I told him, I said, well, first I'm like, hey man, nice to meet you. I'm Josh, I'm your trainer. And he's like, oh, okay, man, whatever. And he's throwing shit on my bed. And I said, hey, the top bunk's yours. Um, so you can put your stuff up there or we've got cabinets up top. You can put stuff in those cabinets. All the top cabinets are cleared out. That's all yours. Uh, and that will all be your space. And he goes, man, what the fuck are you talking about? And I said, what do you mean? What am I talking about? I said, the top bed, it's yours. Um, top bunk, it's yours. And he said, no, no, that ain't gonna work for me. He said, that thin little mattress up there, 
No, no. Look at the mattress on this bunk, is what he's telling me, pointing to my bunk. He said, look how thick that mattress is. He said, that one's mine. And I said, no, 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 sir. Your stuff needs to go up on that top bunk or in the cabinets up top. Um, the, the bottom bunk's mine and that's all there is to it. Well, he tried to keep arguing with me and I said, no, or, or you gotta go, man. I said, we're not doing this. We're not starting out this way where you're taking my bed. That's crazy. Um, so we put all this stuff up top and before we rolled out, I sat down with him. I said, uh, you know, I, I asked him first, I said, are you uh, comfortable with driving right away? Do you want me to drive for a little bit and we can talk about things that are going on? How are you feeling? And he said, man, fuck this. I got this. I can drive this fucking truck. Well, I didn't really like that attitude much, but I said, okay, let's see what you got. So I switched over in the passenger seat. I said, okay, before you go, before you drive, I said, let's chat for a minute. I said, uh, so what we need to do first and foremost, me and you are going to be living together for the next three weeks. We are almost going to be tied at the hip constantly. Um, you know, when it's, when it's time to go get a shower, you probably don't have, you know, loves points. So uh, I'll go in and I'll use my card so we can both get showers, separate showers, guys, separate showers. Um, I said, so what we need to do is, is make sure we're obviously respecting each other. You know, we are going to share a space for a while. We need to be respectful of each other while we're doing this. And that's really the biggest rule in this truck. I said, anything else, as long as you're willing to learn, I can teach you. Um, take it slow, take your time. Um, you're here to learn, right? Hold on, it's very hot in here. Let me turn up my AC. All right, sorry about that, sorry about that. So, he says, yeah, man, I got you, I got you. I said, all right, if everything's good with you, I said, I've already done the pre-trip. If you would like to get out and talk about things, we can do that. Uh, we can walk around the truck again, but if you're co cool with just driving, I've already checked the truck so we can just head out if you want. And he said, let's go. And I said, let's go then. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so we're leaving the terminal. And um, and uh, we go out of the terminal. We make a right out of it. And then we're headed towards um, some stoplights right underneath the interstate. And I tell him, when you come up to these this stoplight, first set, go through it. Next set, we're going to make a left. That's going to get us on the interstate. He doesn't say a word to me doesn't respond completely non-responsive okay fine whatever we get to the first set of stoplights that he makes a right down some side road um and as he's making the right i'm like hey hey man uh hey hey oh we were supposed to go straight through that light and go left and he goes didn't you fucking say right i said no i didn't i said it's cool we're fine we're gonna fix this right so it's a very wide street. As a matter of fact, I've made that mistake on that street before where I, I thought I was turning to go onto the interstate and I'm on this side street instead. And I've drove down a little bit. It, there's an intersection and it's very wide. I said, so when you come up on this intersection, you know, it's like four in the morning at that point, something like that. And um, I said, turn on your flashers. I said, that's kind of a rough way to start, but that's okay. I said, when you come up to this intersection, we're just going to do a, a U-turn in this uh, intersection. And I get it, guys. Times have changed since then. You, we used to bust UEs in places. Companies are very strict against that now, some companies. Uh, some companies are even firing people if they catch them doing a U-turn on the little camera they got up there, right? But times were different then. I said, we're just going to bust a U-turn right here. Uh, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through it. I'll tell you how to turn this truck as long as we're all clear no traffic coming we're just gonna hit a u-turn right here rough way to start but we're gonna get through it so he starts into it like making the right you know because we're gonna swing left to make our u-turn back the other way making the right to give us some more room i say yep just keep turning the right turn the right turn the right okay start going straight forward straight forward i said okay now let's go ahead and swing this truck left right and he starts swinging the truck left and he stops like in the intersection just completely stops the truck this is i feel like this is on me at this point i'm like okay maybe i wasn't clear enough on telling them where to turn the light i got us into this position i should have been talking to him through the whole process okay i said what's wrong man and he said there ain't no way this fucking truck's gonna make a u-turn here i said it absolutely will i said trust me on this it's absolutely going to do it and he goes fuck no it ain't there ain't enough room for this this u-turn i said there is man and uh, no shit, he goes, then you fucking do it. And he puts the truck in park and he gets out of his seat. And I said, okay, yeah, that's fine. I said, uh, yeah. I said, I'm sorry. Like I didn't, 
I'm sorry we're kind of in this position, but if you're ever not comfortable with doing something, let me know, right? So I get in the driver's seat and I'm just talking him through it while we do it. I said, okay, so we're just gonna swing left, you know, watch your trailer, watch your mirrors, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, and I whipped us around that U-turn. Got us turned around and I get back in the, in the uh, passenger seat. We switched seats. I said, okay, cool. And I just was trying to reassure him. I said, okay, man, just stop, pause, it's no big deal. We got through that. I said, if there's you know an issue in my communication, definitely let me know. I'm a new trainer too. So, uh, hey, let's get better together, right? So we finally make our way onto the interstate, right? And we get onto the interstate, no problem. And we're driving down the road and uh, we're coming up on uh, you know one of the lanes that exit the highway, lane ends, right? And uh, surprisingly for that time of morning, there was a lot of traffic out there. So um, we're driving and uh, I'm, I was kind of just monitoring like, okay, how's he gonna handle this situation? Does he need help? Um, and we're starting to get close to the, the end of the thing, right? And I said, okay, we're gonna have to go ahead and switch lanes. And he hits the steering wheel and he goes, I want to, but these motherfuckers won't move. And I said, okay, Turn on your blinker, turn on your turn signal because then they'll know you're trying to move. You don't have your turn signal on so they don't know that you're trying to move. And he goes, these fucking idiots, man, fucking idiots. And he's hitting the fucking steering wheel. And I said, bro, turn on your turn signal, left turn signal, turn it on. And sure enough, he does. And the cars all make their decision, speed up, slow down, give him room to move over. So he makes the merge. Okay, I'm thinking this guy's maybe just a little bit nervous, right? Maybe, or maybe he's got a really shitty attitude. I'm not really sure. But he merges on the lane, I said, so I'm talking to him. I'm just trying to talk him through it. I said, okay, man, like the thing that you should do better there is always signal your intentions. That way the vehicles around you know what it is you're trying to do. Um, so when you turn on the turn signal, that's gonna start flashing obviously, and then cars will see that in theory, <laughs> and then hopefully move out of your way so you can do what you need to do. Um, and. Uh, that, that's kind of that. And he goes, man, they don't ever fucking move for that thing. And I'm like, eh. I mean, it's all, all you can do. You know, you do have an air horn too if somebody won't get out of the way. I'm not saying get aggressive with that air horn, but maybe let them know you're here. Let them know you're here, you know. So we get through that, and that's uh, crazy enough, right? That's, that's crazy all by itself. And we were headed somewhere in Indiana, I believe. So we're cruising down the road, right? And we get into Indiana, and... I don't know if it's all of Indiana. I try not to go to fucking Indiana, but parts of Indiana have a lower truck speed limit, right? Um, maybe it's 65. I don't think it's as low as 60. Let's say it's 65. Some of you guys might actually know, right? So we're rolling in a truck that's governed at like 66, 67, something like that. I don't really remember. And we're rolling down the road and we're rolling downhill, right? gravity's working for us and we're going about 70 at that point we're in the right hand lane and i wasn't trying to jump on his ass but i wanted him to be aware of his speed now it's a 65 let's say we're rolling 70 you're probably okay you're probably not going to get pulled over right but i i told him uh go ahead and watch your speed let's bring that speed down a little bit because i do want him to be paying attention to the speed of the truck speed limits things like that um, as, a, as a trainee, you probably shouldn't be doing the five over. I didn't really care too much, but uh, I wanted him to be aware of what was happening. So I said, go ahead, just uh, get on your, your, your jakes, your engine brake, which on that Kenworth, they were on the dash over here. So, um, you know, I'm showing him where they are and how they work and he's driving. It's okay. I don't expect him to like know all of this, you know? Um, and uh, I said, so let's go ahead and get that speed down a little bit. And he goes, man, I'm not fucking slowing down. He said, we're only going 70 in a 65. A cop ain't gonna fucking pull us over for that. I said, man, come on. I said, you're in training. Let's slow the truck down a bit, right? And he said, bullshit, bullshit. I will get, I, I am not getting an impeding traffic ticket. And I said, come on, bro. I said, there is no cop on this planet that is going to see a truck going the speed limit in the right-hand lane, pull them over and give them a, a ticket for impeding traffic. That's not what impeding traffic is. Going the speed limit is not impeding traffic. Now, if you're riding out in the left lane and there's cars lined up behind you and maybe you're pacing another truck or there's no one to the right and you're just riding that left lane, then yes, absolutely. But riding the right lane at the speed limit you're never ever gonna get a ticket for that. Correct me if I'm wrong, comment section, but I don't I don't see it. I don't see it happening. So <laughs> anyways, he 
begrudgingly turns on the jakes and you know when we slow down did you like my jake impression pretty slick wasn't it pretty slick wasn't it so we're driving more through the day you know we're getting through our day we're going we're going and the guy is just completely silent all day just looking straight ahead and it's fine it's fine maybe he's not the talkative type i'm watching the mirrors i'm hanging out seems to be doing okay with his driving he's not really a bad driver it's just the the details that's all that's all he's missing the details you know watch your speed use your turn signal things like that but as far as just driving a truck down the road sure he's fine he's fine but we come around this corner right on the interstate and he's still doing his you know 65 or so and this was before or the truck i was in anyways didn't have the radar on the front if you're in cruise for my non-trucker friends if you're running cruise control in a truck now a lot of cars have this feature too if you're coming up on something in front of you it will automatically slow the truck down well that truck did not have that feature right so we're coming down the road we come around this corner and there's this minivan just going like slow as hell right just slow as fuck minivan right lane and i told him whoa get it slowed down get it slowed down because this minivan just kind of was there out of nowhere just going slow i'm like get on the brakes get on the brakes let's get her slowed down right and uh he's on the brakes and i flipped on the jakes from the passenger seat you know and um so we're we're getting the truck slowed down um jakes have changed a little bit over time there's used to be and now and all that some trucks you can have the jakes turned on while the cruise control is on that truck you could not if you hit the jakes it would flip your cruise control off right some trucks are weird like that they're different so you had if you were running cruise control and i was letting him run cruise he was fine he was doing fine with all that um so i flipped the jakes on canceled his cruise control he's on the brake pedal right and i'm like okay cool 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 all right we're slowing down now he doesn't look away at all um and uh then I, I'm like, wait, we're still gaining on that uh, minivan. I'm like, you need to slow it down more, slow it down more, slow it down more. And he's not reacting. He's not responding at all to me, right? I'm, Bro, you need to slow this truck down, right? And he pushes on the brake and he looks straight at me, right? And just this dead stare. Like he pushes on the brake. He's no longer looking ahead. And he just stares at me the whole time and just keeps holding the brake and brings the truck to a complete stop on the interstate while never breaking eye contact with me the entire time. Now I'm doing, I'm looking between him, I'm looking between the road, are we good, are we good? Is there anyone in front of us? And he's just staring at me as he brings the truck to a complete stop. We're stopped now on the interstate, cars whipping around us, trucks whipping around us, complete stop and he's just staring at me. And I'm like, bro, are you okay? Is everything okay? And he like goes, oh, I must have pushed the wrong pedal. It was like this, guys. He's like staring at me. I must have pushed the wrong pedal. And then starts driving again. Now, I don't know if he was just annoyed. Like he was like, here's a part I left out of the story. The guy was in his 50s. He was former military uh, Marines. But he also did a lot of time in prison after that, right? So the guy's like... I didn't know if he was like throwing a tantrum because I was telling him to slow down or if like something just broke in his brain or what was happening, right? So we drove a little bit longer. We called it a day, you know? Um, I said, hey, let's drive a little bit more. We're ahead on this load, let's call it, right? No big deal. So the rest of the day wasn't too bad, really. Um, when he went to bed, like he was a very loud snorer which is fine, like I can't fault a guy for snoring. I can't be mad about that, right? Nothing too crazy about it. Uh, we get up the next day and uh, we do our normal thing. Let's uh, go pre-trip the truck. I walked around the truck with him, any questions, anything you're seeing that we need to get fixed, anything wrong here, that kind of thing, right? Pre-trip the truck, hit the road and roll on into our delivery, right? And when we got to our delivery, this is a part of the story that a lot of people got mad about last time too, but I'll, I'll explain as best as I can. When we got to the uh, delivery, we got backed into our dock. He did fine. The backing wasn't too bad. Took a little time, but you know, a new guy, that happens, right? So, um, anyways, uh, when we got into the dock, I told him on the, the ELD, the E-log, I was showing him more of how that works. And I said, when I get to a shipper or receiver, I always put it into sleeper berth. 
instead of off duty. Um, I said the reason is we were doing refrigerated. So I told him the reason is we never really know how long we're gonna be here. So if we're here for a long time, then we could end up getting like a split sleeper berth and then we can run our clock a different way and things like that. And he goes, man, what the fuck's a split sleeper berth? And so I'll give him you the same answer I gave him then. Because the fact of the matter is, I can run a split sleeper berth. Do I ent entirely understand it or go out of my way to run it? No, absolutely not. Um, I've been able to truck for 10 years and manage my schedule without needing a split sleeper berth. Um, a lot of people insist you need them. Uh, I've never needed it. There's been a time or two where I've like, hey, I'm not gonna make this appointment, uh, but the split wouldn't have saved me in those situations. Um, I don't see the use for it, but I was trying to explain to him like what a split sleeper berth was. And he says, well, what makes it happen? And I said, that's a really good question. I said, I hardly ever use it. I said, so I think we what we could do, we could Google it and read about it. Like, let's, let's get out our phones and Google it and read about it. Um, and then we could decide how this works. We could talk about it, right? I said, because I gotta be honest, I'm not the expert on split sleeper berths. I was only telling you because we could be here a while. Um, and we may need to know those things sometimes, right? And he loses his shit at that point. He goes, man, you're fucking telling me about shit you don't even fucking know about. Like, wh why are you telling me to fucking go read about it? And I said, bro, I'm only telling you because it might be useful one day. It's so hot in here right now. It might be useful for you to know one day. I said, I, I'm being honest with you. I don't know the specifics of a split sleeper, um, but yeah, you might find it useful one day. And, uh, the only way to get it is to be in sleeper berth. That's the only way that will work, right? <laughs> so he's he's losing his shit about that. And I've about had enough of this guy at this point. I'm like, I don't understand, like, any time I talk to the guy, why he's having these fucking outbursts. I, I'm trying to help. I'm literally here to help you learn how to be a truck driver, right? All this other stuff doesn't need to be happening. We don't need to be, like, freaking out about things. I'm literally here trying to help you learn to be a trucker. Now, I want to be honest with you. There are, well, there were things then I didn't know about trucking. Now I know everything. <laughs> but there were things I didn't know specifically. But I've always been that kind of guy. If I don't know something, let's look it up and let's see what we learn. So I didn't think I was crazy out of line by saying, hey, let's let's read about it. Then, then you'll know. Whatever. Fucking whatever, right? Uh, but I was about sick of his shit by then, right? So uh, we finished uh, that delivery, and I don't remember how the rest of the day went. That was whatever. Um, the next morning, uh, we got up, and I told him, I said, we're only going to run a few hours today. I said, we've got, you know, we did our delivery. We got another pickup or whatever. I said, we've got plenty of time to make this load. I said, but I'm running short on my uh, 70 hours. Um, so we're only gonna run a few hours today um, and that's all we need to do and we're gonna call it a day. I said, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and drive that, okay? Um, and the reason was, was I wanted to just, for one, I wanted to calm it the fuck down in the truck. It needed to stop being so hostile, right? But I wanted to just drive the truck, explain to him what I was doing, why I was doing it, my thought process behind things, using my turn signals, because he was still really bad about using them. He just whipped in and out of, you know, uh, lanes. Uh, using the Jake brakes, explaining my thought process for things, right? I did skip a part in the story. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and go back to it real quick. When we were going through Indiana, you know, they got those like big flyover ramps that have like a speed limit of, you know, like 35, 45, 55, I don't really know. But he whipped through that thing at 70 miles per hour, you know, and I was over, he's he's hitting this damn ramp and I'm in the passenger seat and you're going, dude, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And then, then I reached over and hit the jakes again. I said, slow the fucking truck down, dude. And he told me when he did that, he's like, dude, I got this. I had that. I didn't need to slow down for that. I'm like, motherfucker. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I want you at the speed or under of these posted signs 
on your exit ramps. We, we had talked about that when he first got in the truck, and I know I forgot to tell that part of the story, but he argued with me because I told him to slow down on those fucking ramps, and I mean, that truck was leaning, boy. When he's going around that thing, I'm like, fucking slow it down and hit the jakes. I'm like, motherfucker, man. So I wanted to drive those few hours just to kind of calm it down in the truck, it, let him watch me do my thing, and then he could kind of, you know, go from there. So we drive the few hours. He says nothing to me the whole morning. I'm trying to explain stuff to him. He doesn't respond. He just looks straight ahead the whole time. We get into this, uh, there, we were up in Ohio by that time. We had went like Indiana up over to like Pennsylvania over to, and we were headed through Ohio. So they got these travel centers on the side of the interstate. You can park. They've got some restaurants inside, free showers, uh, free showers in those. And that's where we parked. So I pulled into the spot, still morning. It's still nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. And he goes, man, why, why do we got to stop? Um, if you don't have hours, he said, I can still drive. And I said, I hear you. Like I, I felt like this question was coming. I said, the reason we're doing it um, is because I want to make sure, for one, we're doing this by the books. If I'm sitting up in that seat training you, then in the event we get pulled over, um, I need to be showing on duty time, not sleep or birth, not off duty, anything like that. So I need hours still for us to continue going. I said, but it's a good learning experience because you can find out how to manage your clock when you're low on hours. And that was the whole exercise. We had like a two, three day trip. We were headed to Omaha. So that was sort of the whole exercise, really. I'm not just there to teach you to run the clock. I mean, run the truck, drive the truck. I'm there to teach you to be an over the road truck driver and managing your clock is a huge part of that, right? So I said, what I'm, the whole point of why we're doing this um, is so you can see when you're running short on hours, how you can run your clock in a way to keep you running so you can keep making your deliveries and getting off to your next load and making more money, right? So we're just gonna run it like my clock's the only one that exists and that's how it's gonna work. And that's when the bomb got dropped on me that I didn't know about. He goes, bullshit, man. My last trainer would always be logged on sleep or birth when we were doing this. And I said, your last trainer? He said, yeah, man, you're my second fucking trainer. And I said, geez, I couldn't imagine why. You, the guy's got a shitty attitude. I said that in my head. Now, here's the thing. I'm not a very big person. I'm sure a lot of you guys can tell that. I am five foot six. Then I was like 130 pounds, if that. Now I'm like 160 because I'm getting chubby, right? But if that, I was 130 pounds. And he was a very big guy. He was six foot, six two, easily 350. He was a very big guy and very like confrontational, right? Not me not me at all um so and i was much more timid and the guy was very intimidating to me right so anyways uh i don't know what why what I, what point i was making with that but now he's yelling at me about how his other trainer would uh you know let him work and he would be on sleeper birth and i said i get it but that's not the way we're going to do it here and i didn't know that i that's the point I was making. I said all this in my head. No shit, it's your second trainer. Now that all makes sense. I didn't know that my company had already tried to give him a trainer. They didn't get along and he was with someone else. And then my fucking company picked me, literally me, to train a very hostile individual to be a truck driver. Wow, what a shitty thing to do. So anyways, I said, hey, that's just what we're gonna do, man. I wanna teach you to run this clock also. I don't wanna teach you to just drive the truck. I wanna teach you to be efficient out here. Make money, keep this truck rolling, right? So he gets mad about that. He, whatever, man, I, I, did, I just think this is how we should do it. He called his old trainer and put him on speaker and said, hey man, I'm with this fucking new trainer and I wanna get out here and run. And he's saying that because he's out of hours that, you know, we're gonna just call it a day. And the other trainer's like, no man, like that guy should be in fucking sleeper berth while you're working and all that stuff. So now he's got his old trainer that he did, his old trainer didn't get along with him so much that he kicked him off the truck. But now he's taking his side against me 
and telling him what I should do. So the guy's like, yeah, that's what I thought. And he hangs up the phone. He's like, see, I'm telling you, we could still be running. I said, look, man, that's how your old trainer did it. I'm not going to do it that way for those reasons that I've stated. And this is a very important thing for you to learn, running your clock, managing your clock, finding ways to still make the load on time with the time that you have. And that's it, that's what we're going to do, okay? So I said, I'm going in, I'm gonna go have me some lunch, I'm gonna hang out inside for a while. He had a key to the truck, I said, I'll see you later, man. So I go in, I'm eating, I'm hanging out, finding stuff to do, keep myself occupied for a while, because these travel centers are super boring. But I'm in there, I'm hanging out. Anyways, um, whatever. I spend most of the day inside watching TV, they got TVs in there, go back and have dinner, fine, whatever. He comes in a few times, walks by, I pointed him towards the showers, I said, these showers are free if you want one. He goes back to the truck, gets his bag, goes and takes a shower, all these things, right? Later on in the night, I had not seen him. I didn't really care. You know, I don't care. So I decided to uh, go back to the truck. Okay, I'm going to go get me some sleep. So I come in through the driver's side door. I'm getting up in the truck. And through the glow of the lights of the dashboard, I see this big man just sitting in the passenger seat, staring at the driver door as I come in. That's it. He's just sitting there. He's not holding his phone. He's not doing anything. He's just sitting there as I come through the door. And I said, what's up, man? You doing all right? He's like, oh, yeah. He was, he was really calm, like a creepy kind of calm. He said, I'm just trying to, you know, I was trying to sleep and I couldn't sleep. I said, that's cool, man. I said, it happens. I said, I'm going to get some sleep. So uh, good luck to you. And I crawled back there in my bunk, right? Crawled back there in my bunk. And as I'm kind of drifting off to sleep, I feel the truck kind of shifting around. It doesn't take much to move these trucks, you know? So I'm like, oh, maybe he's going to bed or something. And um, then a couple minutes go by and I hear music. Why am I hearing music? And the music's getting louder and louder. And I realize that he is in the front seat. He has flipped the key on to the truck, or maybe we had an idling or something. I don't remember and he is turning up music on the radio. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And I'm like, I, I'm starting to feel like he's legitimately crazy at this point. He's had all these crazy outbursts up to this point. And then he's just sitting here staring as I come into the truck, right? And now he's just turning up music. So he turns up music, he listens for a few minutes, he's rolling the windows up and down. And I'm like, what the shit is going on with this guy? Maybe it's nerves, man, I don't really know. And, uh, then a few minutes go by, he turns the radio completely down. Still playing with the windows, rolling them up and down. Turns the music back up. Flips through the stations, turns the music back down. This literally goes on for like an hour because I'm starting to get concerned at this point. I'm like, why is this guy so damn weird? And I'm starting to feel really concerned. I'm in the back. He's got me cornered at this point. He's much bigger than me and clearly much more insane than me. After about an hour though, of this going back and forth, I sat up and I said, dude, Right as I sat up, he's sitting in the seat, right here, like this, looking at me. I sat up and he's just staring at me. How long has this son of a bitch been looking at me? But I sat up, I said, dude, are you almost done with the radio? And he said, what? What are you talking about? I said, you've been turning the radio on and off for the last hour. He goes, that wasn't you? And like, I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I said, how could that be me? I'm back here. He said, you don't have controls for the radio back there? I said, dude, seriously. I said, this has got to stop. I said, can you turn the radio off? Go to bed. Like, just call it a night. Go to bed, right? And he's like, okay. So he did. He turned the radio off and he went to bed. Now, I had drifted off to sleep a few times with this music turning off and on, right? So anyways, um... <laughs> um, after a while, he's he's up there and he starts snoring really loud again and woke me up. Now, I'm not getting any sleep that night at all because I'm like paranoid as shit as it is. And I'm drifting off to sleep and he just starts snoring super loud. I don't fault guys for snoring, okay? But I fucking lost it. I grabbed all my shit, wallet, keys, put my shoes on, right? And I barreled out the driver's side door like basically screaming like a psychopath in the truck stop motherfucker right and i slammed the fucking door shut god damn it 
and I fucking, uh, I had grabbed my backpack. I had some clothes in there. I grabbed my backpack on the way out and I went in and I used the free shower in there and I actually was starting to reflect on everything going on with this guy. Like this is just really weird behavior and I slept on the bathroom floor in that shower that night because I was like too freaked out to go back to the fucking truck. He was just creeping me out, right? So um, in the morning, I went back to the truck. I had told him we were gonna roll out at like five or something. It was three, I was tired of waiting around. I got went back out the truck, I open up the curtain, I get back in, it's three o'clock in the morning. That son of a bitch is sitting in the passenger seat just staring at this door when I got in. I was like, good morning. I said, open up your curtains, man. I said, we're gonna roll. And he was still very calm. The outbursts were over, right? And he's like, hey, Josh, I just wanted to tell you that I'm really sorry. I said, okay, man. I said, well, let's talk about it. What are you sorry about, you know? And in that time, I'm getting the truck ready to go, you know? Um, and uh, he, he's telling me, you know, I, I'm really sorry about my snoring. And I said, dude, I, I don't care about your snoring. I said, it's, it, people snore. I said, it's not that. You know, that's, I'm not at all frustrated with your snoring. I said, I know that I got out of the truck last night basically screaming when you started snoring. I said, it's not your snoring that's the problem, okay? And uh, I had already been on the phone with safety um, early, early morning. Yeah, I, I had him on the phone. I was like, I can't have this guy with me anymore. So they were gonna have me take him to like Elkhart or something, Elkhart, Indiana, back across Ohio through Indiana. I think it was, it's been years and drop him off at a Greyhound, right? But I was, I had already made up an excuse because the guy was scary. I, I'm, I'm never going to lie about that. Like people are like, what were you scared of him? What are you a bitch? That man could have killed me easily, right? So I had already got it all worked out that we were getting him a bus ticket. And um, so anyways, he's apologizing for his snoring. I said, don't worry about it. We start driving down the road and I'm telling him, I said, so, we've got you a new trainer, you're gonna go with someone else, right? And he's like, a third trainer? I said, yeah, man, you're gonna go with someone else, I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna get you over to Indiana, we're gonna get you a bus back to the terminal. I said, I got a situation at home, I'm gonna head home, right? And he's like, okay, okay. So I tell him um, that, uh, I told him that his snoring wasn't the problem. I said, I gotta be honest with you, man. I said, since you've gotten in my truck, like a couple things have gone wrong. I said, you've been very, very disrespectful to me. You've yelled at me quite a few times. You wanted to take my bed. I said, I live here, man. This is the old trucker mantra when you're a trainer, especially. This is my home. I live here. I said, when you get into your next trainer's truck, please respect that man and respect his home. And he gets loud with me again. He goes, you think I don't fucking know that? I spent time in the fucking joint. I know how to respect people's space. And I said, calm down okay yes the guy's scaring me by this time by th at this point i said calm down i said you have been disrespectful in my truck and you need to if you're gonna get through this training you need to respect your next trainer right and he goes nah fuck that this is bullshit man this is fucking bullshit so i just shut up i spent about the next hour in silence just driving when i saw loves up ahead of us right and uh I said, hey man, you wanna get a shower? He's like, yeah, okay. So we pull into the loves and uh, I, he gets a shower bag together and uh, we go inside. I, <laughs> I, go, I tell the cashier we need a shower and I hand him, I get, open up my wallet, I hand him my loves card. They used to be cards then, they weren't digital like they are now. And uh, the cashier scans my card and goes, you don't have any showers on here. And I'm like, what? So I grab the card and I look at the card. I'm like, this thing's like brand new, right? And I'm looking at the card and I looked at the trainee and I said, man, what the fuck is going on? And he goes, oh, my bad, my bad. He gets out his wallet, hands me a loves card that was mine that somehow got swapped during, maybe when I was in and out of consciousness the night before. He had swapped our loves cards, right? So when I offered to get him a shower, I found out, he had taken my loves card. Well, for those of you that don't know, we get a lot of rewards. Like I eat a lot of free food. I get a lot of free stuff for the truck. It's cash value on these cards, right? He had swapped our damn cards. So I was like, man, what the hell, you know? So I get him into the shower and I'm out the door on the phone with safety. I said, this motherfucker is not getting back into my truck. I said, he stole from me. He stole my damn loves card. I said, he's not getting back in my truck. 
And they're like, Josh, we can't just leave him there without his stuff. You, you have to let him back in the truck. I said, absolutely not. I, this was my breaking point. I said, this guy is not getting back in my damn truck. And they said, Josh, we can't do this. We can't leave him here. You have to hand him his stuff at least. You have to hand him all his stuff. I said, this is the best I can do. This is the best I can do. I can put all his stuff out beside the truck. And when he walks out, I can point to all his stuff on the ground and I'm leaving. He is not getting back in this truck. No way, no how. And they said, okay, I mean, I guess, I guess if that's what you want to do. So I'm unloading his stuff. Now I'm not throwing his stuff out. I'm not breaking his stuff. I'm respectfully putting all his stuff out on the side of the truck, right? And then I put the last bag out and I'm going to get back into my truck and I hear somebody yelling, you're a fucking liar. And I jump in my truck and I close the door. I pull it closed and he's charging across the fucking truck stop parking lot at me. Hands up fucking yelling shit, running. And I just, <laughs> truck was already running. So I put it in drive, release the brakes and I start rolling and I give him a little, little cheers as I drive away, right? And I left the trainee there. <laughs> <laughs> I left him there. So um, uh, one final point I want to touch on. A lot of people asked me in that old video, they said, dude, why didn't you kick that dude's fucking ass? For one, I wouldn't have been able to. I have to be realistic with myself. For two, I don't know who the rest of you people are that you go to your job and you violently assault other people and then you're like, yeah, that's what everyone does. This is my job. This is how I make a living. If I'm out here like busting skulls open of trainees, I'm not gonna be allowed to work out here, right? Blue collar or not, fighting people is not how you handle things. And I don't care. I mean, there's a lot of people that think trucking is the old rebel trucking where you get out here and you throw punches with people. That's not how it is. So there you have it. There's how I kicked the trainee off the truck. I don't care if you say I was afraid of him, because I definitely was. The man was a fucking maniac. See you guys next time. Bye now.